What's up everybody, it's Ivan with Trout's Fly Fishing. It's five flies for July. The setting, you might be wondering, who are my, my pals here? Well, they're the new mannequins for the new shop. We're outside, uh, we're on the back deck of the new shop um, opening on Friday. So Friday, July 10th, we're gonna open up this place. Pretty excited. Uh, everyone's in there uh, sorting through flies. We're about to start merchandising, uh, getting the you know deep clean done. So uh, things are happening, things are moving. Uh, you know, certainly apologize. We're not on the water this month. Uh, we've had a weird couple months, obviously, uh, with current events and then also uh, I just had a baby so you know apologize for the lack of on the water content but don't worry i have plenty of good things in store uh for august and you know month of july and august going forward so uh make sure to stay tuned for that stuff uh in the meantime let's get to july one of my favorite months to be on the water it's dry fly season it's time to throw dries there's all sorts of hatches going on uh and flows have sort of dropped into those prime time uh mid-summer flows so we're seeing a lot of good fishing right now and uh we've been waiting all year to throw dries might as well throw some dries so let's talk about it five flies for july fly number one is craven's morning wood special this one uh tip was originally designed as a salmon fly but he's added some uh some variations to it. This one's gonna be the golden stone variety. So you see some goldens here and there, uh, but it's also a really good attractor uh, pattern. So in the size 10, uh, you can hold up some bigger flies beneath if you want to throw dry droppers, uh, but the golden stone will certainly take fish, um, you know, early on in July and, and into, uh, into the end of the month. So uh, really like this fly, floats well, floats like a real stone fly. So it's a little bit, you know, sort of lower profile. Uh, so it has a ro really robust body. And uh, yeah, can't say enough about the old Morningwood special. Right, Jim? Jim agrees. Morningwood special, fly number one. Fly number two, the Lowrider Stone in eight, sat in the, col the color tan. Uh, another low profile stone fly like the Morningwood special. Uh, you know, this is a good attractor, good for dry dropper fishing. Uh, you know, good fishing out of the boat, sort of as that lead fly. Uh, and, you know, with any stone fly, you wanna make sure it's not riding too high in the low rider stone, it's in its name, it's in its design, sort of has a flatter profile on the water. Uh, so you're not getting some, that when it gets super wonky, a lot of, you know, sometimes some stone flies will ride too high and they'll start to tilt a little bit. Uh, but, you know, with these rubber legs, with this good, you know, the nice profile, it's gonna lay a little bit lower in the film, not in the film, but right above the film. And, uh, you know, definitely produce as a stone fly and as a, uh, you know, hopper, what, what, whatever it might have you. So, uh, you know, obviously the chubby is an all time favorite here in the shop. Uh, we wanted to go through a couple options. Uh, if you were feeling like uh, stimulators or chubbies weren't your, uh, weren't, weren't getting it done for you. So, uh, low rider stone, fly number two. Let's get to fly number three. Fly number three, the Sparkle Dunn, well, Matthew's Sparkle Dunn, size 16 in the PMD variety. PMDs are gonna be present, uh, you know, late June into July, and, uh, you know, typically will emerge late at, late morning, mid morning, late morning into early afternoon. Um, you know, fish like to find them sort of in those transitional areas. You'll see them in riffles, you know, eating nymphs, and then you'll also see them sort of, uh, you know, off those riffles under those little sort of pockets of uh, quiet water where they'll start to pick off duns and stuff like that when they're emerging. So the Sparkle Dun is one of my favorite Mayfly patterns for a variety of hatches. It floats well, it's easy to see, and it has a really sort of simple profile, uh, buggy profile, and it flat out gets the job done. So uh, probably fish that 5X, 4X if they're stupid, 5X, 6X if I have to, but Generally, four or five is where I'm going to live with the uh, Sparkle Dun. So, uh, can't say enough about that fly. It's a classic for a reason. Definitely one to have in your box in a variety of patterns. There we go. Fly number three. All right, Jimmy, let them know what fly number four is. I'm waiting. 
There, you want to whisper? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Fly number four, the Hairwing Drake, green, size 12. Size 10 would also be a good option. Uh, so obviously the Roaring Fork, very well known Drake hatch there, but you'll also see Drakes throughout the state. I love seeing them uh, upper arc. Uh, that's always a good, uh, fun place to see them. And you'll, you know, won't necessarily see a ton of them on the upper arc, but you'll see enough to make the fish uh, sort of clue in. Uh, cloudy days are probably best in the afternoons uh, if you want to see them during the day. Otherwise, you'll start to see them in the uh, evening. And the uh, nice thing about it is you get to fish big dries, big mayflies. Uh, this actually might be one of my, I'm going to just say it, it's my favorite hatch uh, of the year. It's a, something I look forward to uh, running into because when they're on drakes, they're on drakes really well. You don't have to have a ton of them on the water for them to be tuned into them. So I uh, really love green drakes. The herring drake, sort of a classic pattern. It's got the deer hair. Uh, you know, floats really well. It's an old school pattern, but it's uh, effective for a reason. One that uh, definitely should be included in your box. Size 12, Harrowing Drake, green. Let's go. All right, fly number five is the Resting Caddis in size 16 tan. Uh, this is from our good friend, Alec Gerbeck. So uh, typically a lot of the traditional caddis patterns are gonna be uh, you may be adding a little extra motion, a little extra twitch, uh, but the resting caddis is meant for uh, sort of those flat water situations where uh, you're trying to do something a little bit more realistic and uh, get a bit of better, better drag-free drift. So uh, resting caddis is a great option for those picky flat water, fly, uh, flat water fish. Uh, definitely recommend having in the box. If Alec Gerbeck fishes it, I'm gonna fish it. That's all there is to it. All right, that's Five Flies for July. Certainly appreciate you guys tuning in. So you know, appreciate your patience over the last couple of months with uh, regards to some of the on the water content. Um, gonna be revving that back up uh, shortly. So expect a lot coming soon. Uh, we are here on the Denver South Platte uh, at the new shop. So Denver South Platte is right over there, uh, right at the corner of basically 8th and Zunai. So right off of 25, really easy to get to on the way out of town, uh, wherever you live, we actually, did some of the math and uh, with the exception of the people who live near the old shop, we are closer to you in every way. So uh, we're excited about that. Um, obviously the new shop opens on the 10th. We got the Traeger going right now, cooking some burgers, uh, but we're hoping to you know, make a you know pretty, make it a, a pretty regular thing. We're gonna be you know, using that Traeger out here on the back patio, enjoying some, uh, some of Denver brew, uh, Beer Company's finest. Uh, we're gonna have some of that on tap. And obviously the, the new shop's a little bit bigger. We have an education center. Uh, there's a lot of things to be excited about. So uh, obviously we've been hard at work getting that ready. Um, excited to have you guys down, welcome you guys down on the 10th. And I uh, hope you guys are staying safe and uh, enjoying your summer on the water. Uh, certainly a good way to get out and uh, get away from things right now. So yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you here at the shop. Have a good one.